Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You know, I feel like I should stand on this side today. <laughs> You know, because we're kind of heavy on this side. I hope we don't tip over this one. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to worship on this. Is it a liquid sunshine morning? I guess it's a kind of rainy day here today. Uh, just want to call your attention to the announcements that are printed in the worship bulletin. Uh, there are a few new things here, but uh, the flowers today are due to the glory of God. Um, something new, uh, blessing of animals. Well, it's not new, we've done it before, but uh, uh, it's a new announcement in the bulletin, and we will be doing that on Saturday, October 19th, um, um, at 10 a.m. Uh, I think that's a typo, I think we said it's going to be 10.30, so it'll be, it'll be 10.30 a.m. Um, so uh, announcements are going to be in the newsletter, and uh, we'll publicize it out to the community as well. Sunday, November 3rd, there will not be a morning worship service on that Sunday. Okay? So there will be one worship service, and that will be at 3 p.m. Uh, um, the Reverend uh, Carlos Hahn, who is the uh, assistant to the bishop, uh, DEM, will be officiating that service for the Senate, so he will be with us on November 3rd. Uh, so we hope you can join us. Invitations to that will be going out this early this week. There's an announcement in for about Christmas wreaths for $25. Um, spring and summer fuel still stands at $14,056. Uh, and the 40 year inspection is asking about the few things that we have to do uh, to pass that inspection. Are there any other events? Bubba has an announcement. Yes. Thank you. Good morning, Pastor Rick. I appreciate it. Just to say thank you to everyone who helped us during that um, summer appeal. Um, I think it was an extraordinary effort, and we are just truly, truly grateful and appreciate your generosity, okay? And, and then in terms of the 40-year inspection, one of the two items that needed to be repaired was repaired on Thursday, a panel, electrical panel in the kitchen was in fact moved from inside to outside, and then this week, weather permitting, Monday or Tuesday, they're supposed to be coming to replace the parking lot lights, uh, to, to put, uh, put in the LED lights and that should be um, what we need to do in order to finish that 40 year inspection process. We'll get the report, there may be a few minor things after that, but the main things are listed here for your review. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah. And we are thankful, we're thankful to God, and we're thankful to um, everyone who's had help with the 40 year inspection that, um, that we didn't take a larger hit than we had to take, right? So this is quite minimal, um, expensive, not that expensive, expensive or minimal, but it's something we have to do. So. If there are no other announcements, uh, we begin with confession and forgiveness. I invite you to stand and get the oracle. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Let's confess our sin and come to God for you. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are honored to our debts, and have harmed our neighbors and our own hearts. Forgive us our debts, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Let's confess our sins and come to God for healing. In our desire to be first, we make distinctions among ourselves. We place the needs of the poor and the suffering past. In your great mercy, Forgive us our sins, draw near to us with grace in time of need, and turn us to follow in the way of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God promises to forgive our iniquity and to remember our sin no more. By grace you have been saved. 
in the name of Jesus Christ, the source of eternal healing, for sins are forgiven. Amen. Amen.
request for help. Okay. If you can't do something, what do you do? You do. Ask for help. Yeah, like your math. Like your math, yeah. 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 Papa helps you with the homework. I know. Papa helps you with your homework. Yeah. Yeah. What other things you can help with, guys? What else? Yeah. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord, and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Our first reading today from the book of Genesis is, in my opinion, a reading that, well, hasn't always gotten the correct treatment from preachers and in the church. The reading, frequently in the church, has been used in some not so positive ways. Right? Uh, this reading, for example, has been used to condemn homosexuality. This reading has been used 
at times to say, well, women are subordinate to men. This reading has been used to say, you need to get married. But I think there are some words in this text that we frequently kind of gloss over. And those words come right at the very beginning. The Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. It is not good that a person should be alone. We all know that feeling. We all have had that feeling at some point in our lives when we have been alone. Right? And sometimes that's, well, we know that's not good. Sometimes you want to be alone. Right? But sometimes if you're alone too much, it's not a good thing. I think that many years ago when I was single and I was alone. And as I read this text, I think a lot of kind of what Adam was doing, right? Here in the text, what the man was doing. You know, God created all these things and, and the man he looked and he said, no, this person can't be, this creature can't be my partner, this creature can't be my partner, this can't be my partner, right? Sometimes we try to fill our lives with things that we think are going to fill us, that are going to make us whole, but that's not always the case. Sometimes we try to do it ourselves. But what this text shows us is that we have a God who cares so deeply about us that God wants us to have others in our lives. This text is about the human need for partnership, for intimacy, for companionship. This text is about God creating relationship. Relationship for what is needed. The word that is used here, when God says, well, I'm going to make a helper as his partner. Sometimes when we think of the word helper, we think, well, that's kind of a subordinate word, don't we? Oh, I'm just going to have the help get that and take care of that, right? You've heard that, you know, right? Okay. But, you know, helpers, and this word, this Hebrew word, azir, is a word that's not a subordinate word. It's a word that's used in other places in Scripture, in the Old Testament, in the Psalms, that describes God as helper. And we would never think of God as there as being subordinate, would we? Right? So this word is equal to or superior. Right? When I talk to the kids this morning, or even yourself, when you can't do something and you ask for someone to help you, you you do think, well, yeah, they're better at doing this. They're maybe a little more superior at doing this than I am. Right? This text is again about a need for partnership, intimacy, and companionship. And that's not something that we can do on our own all the time. We need God, who is a part of our lives, to sometimes help us with that. Let me share a personal story. You ready? Okay. I was single about oh, 20 years ago, 2008, 2009, right? And I was on, and I don't know, how did you all meet your partners? Those of you have partners. You met them in church? Yeah. Okay. At work. At work? 
Where should be your purpose? Where should be a huh? At a bar? <laughs> Ooh, okay. At a drugstore? Okay. Well, you know, in 2000, and, you know, right now we would say there's an app for that, right? Okay. Now there's all kinds of dating apps, but back then there were sort of dating apps in 2008 and but there was websites. So there were websites, um, something called eHarmony. Have you heard of that? Okay. There was a website called Plenty of Fish. fish in the sea, right? You know? There's all kinds of websites out there, right? And I was on those, right? And I was going to bars, right? And well, with my job, I tend to work alone, so there's nobody that I work with. And I was looking and looking and looking, and I dated. And the people that I dated turned out to be, uh, right? We've all had those experiences, right? And at one point, I had a bad relationship. And at that point, I said, that's it. I'm done. I'm not going to look again. Have you ever done that? Right? Because I was looking and looking and looking, and I was tired, and nothing was there. So one day I was hungry. So I just, and it was late, and I didn't want to um, sit alone at home and eat. Right? It's not good for a person to be alone. So I said, you know, I could go out to a bar restaurant. And I went out to this bar restaurant. And it was later that I wanted to go out. And it was packed. But there was one seat left. I sat in that seat. And I watched it to show going on, and I had ordered a couple of glasses of wine. And wine is a chat, too, just so you know. <laughs> um, I sat in that seat, and I started talking to the person next to me about the show that was going on. It was a show about, it was a name that two intentional. So we were playing this music from the 1980s and 70s. These, these, the music that was, um, what do you call it? Soundtracks from like sitcoms and things? Without the words. Theme songs. Theme songs, right? And people were on the stage and they had guests. Like, what show was that song to? Okay. And I'm up there meeting with my, you know, happy self, right? And, and I'm chatting to the person next to me. Hey, isn't that the song from such and such or such and such? And that person corrected me and said, no, no, that's the song to such and such and such and such. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. And we had a conversation, right? And as the night went on, the night went on, right? We were just chatting about what was going on. That person got up and left and got up and walked up and I said, hey, where are you going? <laughs> uh, right? Oh, we need some friends somewhere. Okay. That's cool. We have a nice time. Have a good time. The next day, I was working on, I was working on a degree and I was at home and I was writing some things and researching and um, in the background I had an app, uh, uh, a website open, Plenty of Fish, and somebody sent me a message. Hey, don't I know you? Right? Um, and I said, no, I don't think so. And a few hours later it was a reply. You were the guy I was talking to last night at the bar. Oh, yeah. Sometimes God has to put things in our place, put things in front of us for us to do things. Sometimes God has to encourage us to go places, right? Fourteen years later, I still with that person. My point is, sometimes we can't go alone. And we need God. We need God to be the one who shows us where we need to go, what we need to do, and we need God for community. This lesson, again, is about our human need for partnership, for intimacy, for companionship, and it's something that God provides for us in different forms. It might be marriage. 
it might mean a good group of friends that you're always around with. It might mean a large family. It can be all different things. And God is the one who does that. So thanks be to God for creating us allowing us to explore and to be, and for God, who creates community, but who keeps community together in our personal lives, in our work lives, in our play lives, in life in general. God has given you many helpers over Brothers and sisters in Christ, may the peace of God which surpasses all our human understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
hear our prayer. Restore, Lord, grant healing and wholeness to those who are sick and suffering, especially Dolly, Bernard, Juan Luis, Vivian and Gerardo, John and Barbara, Earl, Margaret, Nora, Siraj, Sharon, Timmy, Eunice, Diane, Natalie, Leanne, Alejandro, Martin, Andre, Christine, Ernesto, Jesus, Barry, the Perry family, Pua, Yanet, Andy, Teresa, the Garcia and Ferraro family, Gail, Claudia, and Tampa, Tim, Catherine, and Ryder, work through medical professionals to diagnose ease pain and give life to all who seek their wisdom and experience. God of grace, <laughs> unifying God, humans were created for relationship with the earth, its creatures, and one another. Forgive us when division threatens companionship, mutual support, and unity among us. May your love inspire us to build supportive communities of faith where all are cherished. God of grace. Yeah, and today we give special prayers to Charlene Perry, who is hospitalized. <coughs> we also pray for all the victims and for the family. God of grace. Yeah, God of resurrection, you prepare a place in the kingdom through Christ's death and resurrection. We give thanks for the saints who have taken their place at your heavenly banquet. God of grace. Yeah,
do. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending day.
is your love. The body blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace.